we have seen that Petrovsky well poisonous has two properties that are not very desirable. First, it loses derivatives. Second, it is sensitive to lower order perturbations. And uh, today we want to look at uh, what happens if we actually uh, try to avoid these two properties. And uh, this will be done through the new notion of a well poisonous called strong well poisonous. Cauchy problem is called strongly well posed if it has unique solution for each initial data in L2 and uh, satisfying this uh, estimate. And you can see that you have L2 norms on both sides so it does not lose derivatives and we also allow exponential growth. Uh, as you can see, strong well poisonous is an analytic condition because it has uh, something to do with, uh, with the solution of a differential equation. And now if you want to uh, study this uh, in terms of some algebraic conditions, then uh, we will be led to two notions notions one is a uh, certain type of hyperbolicity and uh, the other one is a certain type of parabolicity condition and uh, this the uh, hyperbolicity condition here is called strong hyperbolicity this problem is called strongly hyperbolic if q is equal to one remember q is the highest it's the order of the highest derivative appearing in the uh, right hand side so q is equal to 1 and this exponential is uniformly bounded independent of xi and you can see that this now we have here it is the uh, principal symbol of the operator appearing in the right hand side so you can say this is an algebraic condition it's, it has to do with um, the norm of the exponential of that matrix. Uh, one example of strongly hyperbolic operators is, uh, is a strictly hyperbolic systems. Uh, stri for strictly hyperbolic systems, the principal symbol uh, has, has distinct and purely imaginary eigenvalues. And if this is the case, uh, it would be, it's not difficult to prove that this estimate holds. Now the parabolicity condition is called uh, Petrovsky parabolicity. Uh, again this problem is called Petrovsky parabolic if Q is even and the eigenvalues of the principal symbol satisfy this condition that is the real parts must be strictly negative for all non-zero Xi. The principal symbol is a homogeneous polynomial this simply means that the real part of the eigenvalues is strictly negative on the unit sphere. Uh, obviously, the heat equation will satisfy this condition. Um, another example is this fourth order problem with the fourth order x derivative on the right hand side. Uh, in terms of the capital D operator, it can be written in this way. So the principal symbol is simply minus xi to the power 4. Uh, because it's a scalar operator, this would also be just the eigenvalues. So you can see that the eigenvalues actually uh, it decays very fast as Xi grows. And the main theorem we will consider today uh, is, is here. That if you have principal part fixed, then the Cauchy problem for uh, this equation is strongly well posed for all lower order perturbations if and only if either the principal part is strongly hyperbolic or it is Petrovsky parabolic. So we want to prove the uh, forward implication first. So uh, remember that in free space our equation PD becomes just the ODs, uh, one OD for each Xi in the frequency space. So we split this into two cases. First, suppose that Q is even. Now, if Q 
is even and what we need to prove would be to prove that the real part of the eigenvalues are strictly negative right so let's say for some non-zero eta uh, let's say that the real part is non-negative real part of the eigenvalue is non-negative then because q is even uh, q is at least two so we can perturb by a first order operator so it, in real space that looks like this by perturbing uh, by this first order operator we can ensure that this eigenvalue if you scale it it blows up so that means the real part must be strictly negative so it proves that uh, if q is even it must be petrovsky parabolic now uh, suppose that q is odd okay if q is odd uh, and if the real part is real part of some eigenvalue uh, has a real part that is non-zero then because q is odd by scaling we can make this eigenvalue to go to infinity by choosing uh, either s going to infinity or s going to minus infinity so that means that the eigenvalues must be purely imaginary the eigenvalues of the principal symbol. Second, uh, now we want to show that Q must be 1. So if Q is at least 3, uh, then we can, we will be allowed to perturb it by second order operator, and we simply choose the backward heat operator. So if we perturb by a backward heat operator here, then because that part, this is, has only purely imaginary eigenvalues, the real part will grow like psi squared, so it will go to infinity. So that means you cannot have third order operator. So that means uh, Q must be 1, and uh, eigenvalues of the principal symbol must be purely imaginary. Now we want to... Uh, strong hyperbolicity requires also in the definition uniform boundedness of the exponential. So let's say, uh, let's now write the strong well positiveness condition. Strong well positiveness condition requires this bound, and we need to have basically in the strong hyperbolicity, we don't want to have this exponential here. Now, how we can get rid of this exponential would be to use the uh, homogeneity of P1 and put this T1 inside here and just basically think of this product t times xi as uh, as xi and then so keeping this product fixed send t to zero then the right hand side will go to one i mean this exponential will go to one so the right hand side will go to c so uh, that gives us this uniform bound in, in uh, xi uh, that's strong hyperbolicity now we need some preparation for the uh, other direction. So what we want to prove is we want to prove strong hyperbolicity of the principal part implying uh, strong well positiveness and strong uh, and Petrovsky parabolicity of the principal part implying uh, strong well positiveness. Now uh, recall this definition, this notation uh, for. Uh, two square matrices a is smaller than b basically means that you are you are uh, testing with arbitrary vector y on both sides of them of the matrices okay this lemma will be important suppose that we have two square matrices a and h and they satisfy this h is an emission matrix which is comparable to the identity matrix and uh, this combination H A plus A star H is bounded by 2 alpha times H here alpha can be any number it can be negative then uh, the lemma says, says that uh, the matrix norm of the exp this exponential is bounded by C to the power C, C times E to the power alpha T for all positive times okay so to prove 
this we define given y0 we define uh, this vector depending on on t uh, which means that uh, y satisfies this differential operator y uh, differential equation y prime equal to a y and uh, with initial condition y uh, at time zero is equal to y zero and we want to look at the, the time derivative of this quantity here y star h y so if you do this um, applying the product rule and substituting a y for y prime uh, we get that and then use this condition to have the, that derivative bounded by 2 alpha times the quantity here so we have a differential uh, inequality that gives us that and then uh, we apply the right hand side of that inequality to bound y star y0 star h y0 by c times the norm squared of y0 and the left left hand side of that inequality to bound the left hand side of our inequality uh, from below and in the end it tells us that that exponential the norm squared of that exponential is bounded by c squared e to the power 2 alpha t times the norm of norm squared of y0. That's exactly what we want here. Okay, now uh, this theorem uh, treats this strongly hyperbolic case. It says that the these three conditions are equivalent. The first condition is P1 is strongly hyperbolic. The second condition says that the eigenvalues of P1 are purely imaginary, semi-simple, and the spectral pro projectors of P1 Xi are uniformly bounded in Xi. The third condition says that uh, there exists a matrix H, uh, depending on, possibly depending on Xi, of course, satisfying uh, this condition that is familiar to us, with C independent of Xi, and also that inequality okay so first 3 to 1 is trivial just by applying the, the lemma we just proved so we can see that in particular the right hand side is 0 so alpha is 0 and which immediately implies that uh, implies this bound so it is strong, strongly hyperbolic now we want to prove 1 implying 2 Okay, so uh, in order to see that the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, we apply the same argument uh, uh, that we have seen once before. So uh, basically, because it's uh, it's homogeneous polynomial here, we can scale it to get uh, to get large norm if it has any real part if this eigenvalue. So the real part is zero. Uh, the semi-simple part is similar. If any eigenvalue has defect, now uh, remember now the eigenvalues are all purely imaginary. If any eigenvalue has defect, then this exponential is going to grow polynomially with, with t. So all the eigenvalues must be semi-simple. Okay, so now what remains is to prove that the spectral projectors are uniformly bounded okay because the eigenvalues are semi-simple uh, the matrix is diagonalizable you can diagonalize it and uh, in terms of the spectral projectors we have this decomposition of the operator p1 the spectral projector is simply a, a projector onto the uh, eigenspaces. And in terms of this, we can also decompose the, decompose the uh, exponential function in this way. And we want to now use this decomposition 
to bound the individual uh, spectral projectors. So how we are going to do this? We multiply by e to the power minus t lambda l for some particular l. Uh, this exponential applied to y and then uh, decompose it in terms of the spectral projectors. So we write that again here and now we look at these differences here. Well obviously this difference is zero if k is equal to l and it is purely imaginary and non-zero if k is not equal to l. And we're going to going to uh, take average of take uh, average of the of the left hand side over time okay so we integrate the left hand side over minus capital T to capital T and divide by 2t for large times so if we do that uh, looking at this sum uh, PLY will come out of the integral because it does not depend on time and the remaining part because they are purely imaginary and non-zero they will be uh, oscillatory integrals so in, the dependence of, of on time will be oscillatory let's see the norm of this quantity when k is not equal to l will be bounded so that means the average will go to zero so this average in the limit will simply be PLY. So that's how we actually extract PLY out of this, uh, out of the, the, uh, sp the spectral decomposition of that exponential. So now uh, just imagine that capital T is, is very large. Capital T is very large in the, in the average and, uh, and bound PLY. So if you do that, uh, but so basically imagine that you have this norm here and we are having norms everywhere, okay? Norms everywhere like this. So if you do that and uh, imagine that we are choosing T that corresponds to the maximum of maximum norm of this quantity and take that out of the integral then the norm of this quantity will be because lambda l is purely imaginary this will be bounded by one so this whole thing is bounded by one so we, we will have this bound and then now use the fact that uh, p1 is is strongly hyperbolic uh, to show that, that it's bounded by constant times y so this shows now that spectral projectors are uniformly bounded okay now we want to prove 2 implying 3 <clears throat> we take h simply to be s star s where s comes from the diagonalization of p1 it's uh, obvious that this is actually uh, this is emission and uh, comparable to the identity so for example if you want to look at the upper bound simply substitute and then use this naive bound to bound this from above and lower bound is similar with uh, with s inverse instead of s here okay uh, now uh, for the other condition we have to check that if this is zero so substitute and if you do this for example we have cancellation here and cancellation here we get d plus d star in the middle and d is a diagonal matrix with purely imaginary entries so that means mm, that d plus d star is zero so this is zero and it proves two implies three and uh, an important corollary is that if you perturb a strongly hyperbolic operator by any lower order perturbation um, you're going to get this bound and that immediately gives us because there is no dependence on psi here immediately gives us 
a strong well poisonous of any lower order perturbation of a uh, strongly hyperbolic operator. So uh, to prove this, we simply take H to be this that is used in the proof and write that so and uh, decompose p into p1 plus q then the first part here is zero and bound that part by just this naive bound and because uh, q is constant we get this immediate bound okay the next theorem is now about parabolicity uh, if you perturb a Petrovsky parabolic operator, uh, then this the matrix exponential exponential is going to have have uh, this bound, and it is in actually in some sense better than hyperbolic problems because uh, not only that we have uh, exponential bound but it, it gets better and better as, as Xi grows. So this has something to do with the smoothing property of uh, parabolic operators. Now, uh, the idea is that the, basically the main thing that uh, makes this decay here is the parabolism, is the fact that the real part of the eigenvalues are strictly negative. So if you look at the eigenvalues by using homogeneity of the uh, principal symbol, if you look at the eigenvalues on the unit sphere, uh, they are strictly negative, so they, they, they are going to have, I mean, the real part is going to have some strictly negative upper bound. So that means the real part in general, at, at the general point xi, we'll have this behavior minus delta times xi to the power q. Uh, the main work in the proof will be to show that lower order perturbation will not change this behavior very much. So basically, the, this alpha is because of the lower order perturbation. Okay, so to so we're going to use sure decomposition. Sure decomposition says that any matrix can be decomposed into the product of two uh, unitary matrices and an upper triangular matrix so that you're going to have the eigenvalues on the diagonal and uh, so we're going to uh, to do this on the unit sphere this matrix will depend on depend on eta continuously uh, that means if you look at the size of this matrix on the left on the right hand side the norm of this matrix will will uh, depend on eta continuously so on the unit sphere there's going to be an upper bound so that means that the entry is here in the upper triangular part they are bounded uniformly uh, on the unit sphere actually we want in some sense we want to make this upper triangular uh, off diagonal part arbitrarily small so in order to do that we take this diagonal matrix with some uh, real strictly positive parameter d and multiply t on both sides by d and d, d inverse and let's call that new matrix t prime if you multiply that you will see that the diagonal does not change actually here so they, they all uh, correspond to the principal part. Diagonal doesn't change, but the uh, upper triangular of the off diagonal entries will be multiplied by uh, some negative power of d. So that means by choosing d sufficiently large, we can make these entries uh, as small as we wish. Now we want to write the uh, the sure decomposition involving this t prime. So if you do that t prime in the middle we're going to get this decomposition so uh, we can assume that the off diagonal upper triangular entries of this matrix t prime are uh, sufficiently small so t prime is decomposed into diagonal part 
and small part b okay so let's write that the composition here again we want to use the lemma so in the lemma we simply you simply take h to be the identity matrix so what we want to show is this that would give us uh, the desired bound and remember h is just identity so for example the left hand side of this if we only look at the principal part becomes like that and uh, so that we will get here for example we would get l uh, the lambda plus lambda star uh, but lambda is a diagonal matrix so it would be just two times the real part of lambda which we know is bounded by minus two delta and some small part here so if, if this part is sufficiently small we can make make it sufficiently small we can bound the whole thing by minus delta and that was on the unit sphere and by scaling we will get this behavior in general with minus delta times q uh, x i to the power q now we look at the at the uh, perturbation okay so we just bound at this naively by that and if you look at the perturbation the highest power of xi appearing in this perturbation is q minus one so that can be bounded by quantity like this so this q minus one the growth of order q minus one is less than this decay of order q so we will get this estimate with possibly uh, with uh, with, with, with smaller delta so uh, that proves uh, the desired estimate and uh, in particular it proves that uh, any lower order perturbation of a Petrovsky parabolic operator has a strongly well posed Cauchy problem